from Unity Church of San Antonio, a spiritual community practicing how to be the light of the world, we bring you this message to remind you of your true nature, which is divine. Here now is Reverend Linda Martella Whitsett. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful start to what's going to be a really powerful message. Are you ready? Welcome. Join me in welcoming Lisa Natal. Good morning. Good morning. Good. So happy to be here. And thank you so much to the music team. Let's give them a big hand. I love when the music team is good because it makes my job so much easier because if my talk bombs, uh-huh. it means the service wasn't totally epic fail, <laughs> so thank you. But seriously, I'm really wanting to inspire you today, and I'm gonna turn on a timer here. We have 20 minutes. Uh. Um, let's see, start time. Bill, I need your help. <laughs> right here. Okay, so I'm so grateful to be here. My name is Lisa Natoli, and I'm a miracle worker. And I'm a miracle worker by my own decision and by my own choice. And what I do is I teach others to be miracle workers, which means that I help you to make that choice. And I love the music today, because it's a gift that we give ourselves. This is a gift, we, and we have to give it to ourselves. And often what we think is that God's going to give it to us. And I love you so much, Reverend Linda. And I just have to tell the story a little bit. So Bill and I are prayer chaplains at Unity of the River for the last couple of years. And Reverend Linda came to our church, and it was a mandatory prayer (laughs) workshop on a Saturday morning. And I thought, oh, God, okay, well, it's mandatory, and we love being prayer chaplains, so we're going. And I have been blessed my life with the best of the best teachers. And so I'm a little bit of a snob in the teacher department when people show up, because I think they're probably not gonna be very good, (laughs) because I've been around the best. Well, Linda blew our minds. You blew our minds. And we really were sitting on the edge of our seats, and I don't know if if all of you know this, but she truly is a leader in the unity movement. And she she quite literally wrote the book on prayer. So she wrote the book that all unity churches use in their prayer chaplain programs, How to Pray Without Talking to God. And and that's really something I'm gonna talk about today because she's a real stickler, and I'm so grateful for your passion and your uncompromising nature that you're all reminded that God's not outside of you. God is not a person, not a personality, not a separate being. God is the love that you are. God is the light that you are. It's your being beyond all of your learned ideas that you picked up in time and space as a separate body, separate from everything else. So today's talk is called Overflowing Abundance. And I just love being a teacher because of what's happened to me. I have practically no childhood theology. So I didn't have a lot of dismantling like a lot of people do. and. What I really want to do here this morning is help you to remember the truth of what you are. So I'm a bit of an activator, like you guys who know me. Who's done the 40-day program here? Got my guys here in the front. Like you know, one of the things that I love to do is first invite you into the new space and acknowledge this is a new beginning. So I want everyone here to acknowledge this is your new beginning. This is it. The past is over. And that when you walk out that door today, it's a whole new beginning and you don't know what's gonna happen next. Like new things are possible for you. And so one of the things that I do, one of my spiritual gifts, we all have spiritual gifts. 
one of my spiritual gifts is helping people to do things that they would never otherwise do in a million years. I have that gift. <laughs> I do. And, I, I, and I'm amazed when I see it, but I see people letting go of years of grievances in an instant. I see it. I see people letting go of their story. I see people dedicating their life to love. I see people falling in love with Jesus. And I'm like, okay, good. And so I'm a little bit of a, I give a nudge, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sort of like, come on, it'll be fun. That, that's sort of my approach, it'll be fun. So I'm a teacher of A Course in Miracles, and A Course in Miracles is, it's a book, and it's also the message from Jesus from 2,000 years ago. And it's a systematic way to train your mind to know who you are, to know the light that you are, to know the love that you are. And it, what it also does is it helps you to identify the blocks and the obstacles that are blocking the awareness of love's presence. And when you begin to notice the blocks and the obstacles, you can have them be removed with forgiveness. And so Bill and I at the Teachers of God Foundation, we started a nonprofit um, and we have a 40 day program. It's underway right now, we're on day four today. So the next one is not available until January. But one of the practices that we have there is to watch yourself like a hawk. For 40 days. So Jesus was a man who walked the earth 2,000 years ago and he came to have an experience of his true identity. That he lived his life up until the age of 30. He was a carpenter, he had a family. He had an unusual upbringing which most of us did not have with a mother who was speaking of him of his divine identity from the moment he came in. So most of us didn't have that edge. <laughs> so he had that edge over us. But Jesus still was a man who just lived a normal life like we all did. And at the age of 30, there must have been a stirring in him where he knew my old life is over. And that's the point I want you all to feel that you're at today. That stirring in you, that light in you starts to move. And you start to see there maybe there is another way maybe i don't have to suffer and jesus went into a quiet place the bible calls it the desert and he stayed there for 40 days and what he did was he drew a circle and he made a decision that he was going to stand in that circle and the way the bible describes it is he was led there by the holy spirit to be tempted i love that now, most of us don't want to be tempted, right? We do everything in our power to not be tempted, right? We use the power, uh, positive affirmations, and we just try to get back to happiness. But most of us don't want to look at the fear. But Jesus says, no, I'm going to look at the fear. I'm going to let it come upon me. And he stood there, and he claimed his identity, that the devil, which is nothing more than your ego, your body-based identity, your beliefs, your thoughts and emotions that you picked up here, they come upon us all the time, right? Every day that these come upon us. And what we do as humans is we just keep pushing them away. And what A Course in Miracles and any spiritual path, unity even, says you must look at them. Look at them and deny their power. They have no power over you sickness, disease, suffering, poverty. And so the reason I teach with such authority and certainty is because I've seen what has happened in my own life. I was alcoholic, I was depressed, I was sick all the time, I had no money. I had a job, I lived in New York, I was working in publishing, but I never made it to the next paycheck. You know, it was just this constant fear. And I found A Course in Miracles in 1992 I had no idea what it was. I had no reference of God. I had zero reference of Jesus. I had never read a Bible before. So I came as a clean slate. And my way is I have to see it with my own eyes, direct experience. So I love A Course in Miracles and I love unity also because of the scientific nature of you. So when I say scientific, I mean that it has principles and laws that you can actually use and apply to prove that they work. That's what science means. 
And I said, okay, I'm going to use these ideas in my life. Well, for the first 20 years, it was all intellectual. It was all headspace. I was trying to know what that book was saying, and I did not see changes. And I would go to Course in Miracle groups, and nothing much was changing. I went to the best teachers. I gave all my belongings away. I left New York. I literally gave everything away. I was so determined. There was something in me that knew there's a greater experience, and I could not find it. I could not find it. But I could not let go of the search. And so finally what happened, and this is what today's workshop is on. It's the five-week abundance challenge, five steps to unlimited prosperity, is in 2012, I believe it was, so I was in severe poverty. This was only a few years ago. I had no money, zero. Ten years worth of debt. And but people are looking at to me as a great spiritual teacher. Like they're, they're really seeing healing in their own life, but I'm seeing my own stuckness. And I came to this point, and I just made this decision that I am going to be uncompromising with this message, that I am letting go of my 20 years of thinking I know A Course in Miracles, I'm letting go of everything I think I've learned, I'm letting go of my ideas about God, my ideas about Jesus, all of it, clean slate. And there was a class that was being offered at our Unity Church, and it was a five-week abundance course by Edwin Gaines, and she wasn't there, but we were just using her book. And I just made this decision for five weeks. I am going to shift into my true state of being, and I am going to live from that place. That I am as God created me. I am whole and perfect, period. That was it, period. I'm it. And I started tithing. I'd never heard of tithing before. And I just made this decision for five weeks. I am going to be a rich, happy person who's the light of the world. And... And my life changed overnight. I mean overnight. And so that's what we're going to offer today in the workshop. And it's just been an incredible experience for me because now I want people to know how this works. It works by a decision, by a choice that you can make today. And so one of the things that I often talk about when I'm teaching is what I call your location. So... You're located in a certain place right now based on your beliefs and your understanding of yourself and God. And you look out upon the world, and the world you think you see is based on your location. So most of us, before you have an awakening, are located in the thought system of fear. You have a thought system of separate bodies. You believe in a God that you pray to, that you have to please, that punishes you. I had a belief in a God that was testing me. Like I love Carlos Castaneda and the whole Toltec mastery way and, and you know going from being a disciple to an apostle or an apprentice to a master. So I kept thinking I'm being tested, that God or Jesus or something is testing me. And I'm not quite there yet. And that went on for 10 years, or 20 years even. And uh, get a little bit of water. And so one of the things that we do when we believe in a God that's outside of us, we pray, we wish, we wonder, we hope, we bargain. We, we, and we think, I need to be good. I need, there's something I'm doing wrong, or I'm not asking right. I'm not praying right. So one of the things I wanted to offer today is a great, it really is just a principle from Jesus from 2,000 years ago, ask, seek, and knock. So I want us to look at that this morning. So I love, as you take the word ask, it's three letters, A-S-K, ask, seek, knock, okay? 
And I want you to remember this. I wanted to give you something today that you would be able to remember and carry out into your life. So ask, and it will be given to you. So that's, that's not saying maybe, right? Ask and maybe. And then it says, seek, and you will find, and knock, and it will be opened to you. And to me, the most important words in there are the you. Because often what happens is we ask, you ask for prayers of healing or more money or better relationships or peace, and it doesn't come, right? And you just think, what have I done wrong? But it says, ask and it is given to you. And so often you ask for something, you ask for healing, and it seems like it was given to your neighbor, right? <laughs> You've asked for healing and you open the news up and there's some spontaneous healing from some other guy in California. And it's like, hey, I wanted that. Or you ask for more money and your coworker gets a raise and a promotion. You're like, hey, that was for me. <laughs> no, ask and it will be given to you. And so first we have to ask. We have to know what we're asking for, right? You have to be deliberate now. This is what waking up means. When you wake up, it's not a big deal. It just means that you become conscious now. So in the 40-day program, when I ask everyone to watch themselves like a hawk for 40 days, I want you to watch your language, the words that are coming out of your mouth. I want you to watch your thoughts. I want you to watch your emotions. Just watch them. Don't try to fix them. Just watch them like a hawk. You will be amazed. You will be amazed by the, like the track that has been running unconsciously. That's what it means to sleepwalk. And that's what Jesus meant when he said that he, he made the blind see. That's what healing is. It's that you begin to see things differently. And so when you're recognizing now your location, when you're watching yourself like a hawk, you notice your location. You're like, oh, my God. I'm standing in a thought system where all I see are grievances and people who are doing wrong to me. And, and so you must deliberately move. It's the only way. And that's what the five-week abundance challenge is for me. It is a deliberate, intentional, conscious movement where you say, Okay, I know my story. We all know our stories, right? We know the grievances we've been holding. We know the judgments we've been carrying about ourselves. We know the unworthiness. And we know the prayers of our hearts. And we finally say, this is what I want. I want to see things differently. And you move. And so when I did that five-week class with our minister, Shipley, what I did, and this is what we're going to do today in the workshop, is, this can't be right. Oh, I've like three minutes left? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, I'm going to wrap it up in three minutes. And so what we did, and we're going to hand these out today, is you're going to write a vision for yourself. You're going to write your statement of being as the truth and what I did was I wrote it all down I am light I am love I am generous I tithe I pay my bills on time that I am the light I am the love I see only love I see God in every face that I'm listening I have a meditation practice now I am I am following through with action on the divine ideas that come to me and I wrote the card out before the five weeks began and I literally shifted gears like shifting gears in a car. And I said, my old story of poverty and sickness and complaining and doubt, doubt was my biggest one. Doubt and procrastination. That was my old way of being. And I said, for five weeks, I'm not touching it. That is not me anymore. And I began to live in this. We have what's called the trust formula. And we're going to go through this this afternoon. And you begin to live in trust. And as you begin to practice living this way, not thinking about it, not wondering if it's going to happen later, you step in. You see that it works. And you see that you can give. 
And when I started tithing, at, like, it's like you open the floodgates. I don't know how it works. I just know that it does. And it's going to bring up a lot of fear in you because fear of money is the point for all of us where we get stuck. And you, the only way you can get through the fear is to do the thing you fear. Start giving the money. And, and then, the, but there's more to that. Like where you're really, and it's for five weeks. How bad can it be? And so this is really what we're offering to you, is that this be your new beginning. And that you really can see that you are the love. And how did Jesus heal? And this is what I'm going to close with. I love it. That Jesus saw only wholeness and perfection. And this is how you become a miracle worker. That you make a decision that from now on, you're going to look beyond the appearance of your story, other people's stories. Like, he didn't see sickness. Jesus had an awakening 2,000 years ago where he knew the truth of his being. He knew his oneness with God. He knew who he was. And he left that place of fear, and he walked in the world. And this world needs light. It needs the passion and the childlike innocence that is in all of you. It needs your spiritual gifts. It needs us to rise up out of that place. It needs us to move out of our doubt. And what's so beautiful about a spiritual center like this and like foundations like Bill and I have created is you'll start to notice you're not alone. And what's happened to me over the years, I still fall into doubt. Because what we're doing is we're following a path of invisibility. Like you can't see these things. You can't see the presence of God. But you begin to know it. And you begin to find strength in the joining. When we join together, that's how healing is accomplished. And what I've come to know, it's the light that heals. But you have to cooperate it, with it. You have to work with it. You have to acknowledge it. And that light is in you. And this light, when you acknowledge it, it begins to grow. It's growing now. And it begins to expand. And in the expansion of the light, everything that you buried starts to come bubbling to the surface to be released. And that's a fear point. And so it is a moment of dismantling. And that's why I love, thank you, Reverend Linda, for, for having a community like this, a space where you can come now and join with others and then have be reminded of the truth that you are so you can take that next step. So this is our new beginning. This is our new beginning. The past is over. We consciously are now remembering the truth and the light and the love that we are. And we don't have to know what to do next. We simply stand in this place and we celebrate. I love you. Thank you. Hello? Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Ah, that was beautiful. I love to listen to her talk. I knew she was going to run out of time. She can go on for hours. <laughs> ah, so I'm just going to invite all of us to really relax in your, in your seats for a moment because now we're going to have a, a time where we just enter into the space of what was talked about this morning, our true identity. And I'm just going to invite you all to just relax. And if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, you may do that. I always put my hand on my heart. I, I, I actually, it's, it's involuntary. It just feels like it is such a place of beingness. And this beingness is acknowledging what we are. We can flick this switch out of time and space 
into the presence anytime we want to, right now. And so I invite you to just be present. You are pure light. Pure presence. You are neither old nor young. You have no beginning and you have no ending because you are changeless, timeless. You are this light. This is your reality. You are beyond the beyond. Yes, you are aware of things. You're aware of the senses. But you're not the senses. You're aware of what the person does. You see these things. And yet you are pure awareness. Hmm. In fact, you are what God is. You are the presence and the power of all that is. Just be in this presence. Know this is true. You are beyond the sun and moon and actually beyond the solar system. There's no space where you are not because you are all that is. As the sky watches the clouds go by, yourself, it watches thoughts happen. They pass by and they can't touch you. You are completely invulnerable untouchable. Just as a storm doesn't touch the sky, these things happen. And you just see this. Allow it to be. Because you are perfect stillness. And in stillness, We are one with all that is. So just rest here for a moment. And notice. This is our home. Our self is realized in the silence. Come here often. Come here to know your true identity. Come here and know that you are as God created you because you are what God is. And so it is.
you may open your eyes as just be gentle on yourself and just allow this presence to be a memory point for you. Amen. Thank you. This message has been brought to you by Unity Church of San Antonio to open your heart, transform your life, and celebrate your divine identity. Visit us on the web at www.unityofsa.org. And remember, you are the light of God, so shine brightly today.